Very little is known about a sensitive mission being carried out by a hundred U.S. Special Operations troops deep in the jungles of Central Africa. They've joined several thousand African soldiers in one of the biggest manhunts that's ever taken place. Their goal is to help kill or capture the world's most wanted warlord, Joseph Kony, and destroy his army. This mission is part of a broader U.S. effort to counter the emerging threat to America from the growth of terrorist networks across Africa. Joseph Kony has been on a murderous rampage that has lasted almost three decades, killing thousands and building one of the biggest armies of child soldiers in history. Kony started out in northern Uganda, but his campaign has spread to four countries, and he's now operating in this vast, lawless area in the center of Africa. Our story, which includes images you may find disturbing, begins in the Central African Republic with an elite tracking team from the Ugandan military that's searching for Kony in some of the most remote jungle on Earth. The story will continue in a moment. You don't have to spend much time here to understand why it's so hard to find Joseph Kony. It's as isolated and unforgiving as it gets. <laughs> the undergrowth so thick, every step is a battle. When our producer Jeff Newton joined this Ugandan tracking team, they'd been searching for Kony and his army, called the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA, for three months, tracking them the way you would an animal. Uh, right now we are searching for the enemy trucks. Footprints. Uh, footmarks of the LRA. Yeah. 27-year-old Lieutenant Kasim Lukombo's sole mission for the past three years has been finding Kony, and he's one of the Ugandan army's top trackers. The footprints are the first sign they've seen of Kony's army in six days. As they followed the trail, the soldiers whispered so as not to give away their positions. After an hour, they reached this stream, but the tracks disappeared into the water. No, Ellery. Let's go. Okay. There were no green berets on this mission. They do go out on operations like this, but they prefer to stay in the background. Keeping a low profile is part of the U.S. strategy. They're the lead. They've always been the lead. We're relatively new here. We've only been here just, just about a year. It's really an African problem. It's being handled by Africans. Colonel Kurt Kreitzen, a veteran Green Beret of 23 years, flew with us over the seemingly endless jungle where the area they're searching is as big as Texas. He took command of the U.S. Special Operations mission here not long after President Obama decided to send in troops 18 months ago. The environment is uh, some of the most unforgiving on planet Earth. When you get to the jungle, yeah, 50 feet in, you, you disappear. You're like a ghost. You're like a ghost. Joseph Kony was 26 when he disappeared into the jungle more than 25 years ago. Since then, his army has wiped out entire villages and burned houses down with children inside. They're known for cutting off the ears and lips of innocent people as a way to terrify them into submission. And no one has suffered more than the children. The State Department says Kony's army has abducted more than 25,000. He turns the boys into killers, the girls into a harem of sex slaves and wives. This video of Kony addressing his followers is one of the few times he's been filmed. He's from a religious family in northern Uganda, an altar boy who became a witch doctor. When he started out, he wanted his Lord's Resistance Army to establish a government based on the Ten Commandments. But he's broken almost every one of them, and his army is little more than a murderous cult. Some things you just can't turn a blind eye to, and I believe this is one case of that. The U.S. turned a blind eye to Joseph Kony for more than 20 years. I can't account for why we did or why we didn't come. What I can tell you is we are here now. 
Colonel Kreiter and his men are the bridge between four African armies who are working to find Kony and his fighters. These soldiers are from the Central African Republic, where many people believe Kony might be hiding. The Americans train them in their native French, using the language skills that come with being a Green Beret. And they show them how to make the best of the little they have, like using their beret as a field dressing or a stick as a makeshift tourniquet. Colonel Kreitzer says they have to know how to treat themselves or they die. Our guys bring support in small numbers. This is traditional advisory. This is something that looks like two American advisors out with 40 Ugandans on a tracking team. This is one guy going around throughout the villages to build relationships. Building relationships is central to the mission of Green Berets, no matter where they are in the world. To earn the trust of the locals in these villages, Colonel Kreitz's soldiers use their skills in unlikely ways, helping out at the local dentist and even delivering babies. Together with diplomats from the State Department, they meet with the local tribes every day. So I thank you very much for sharing the information with us, helping provide the whereabouts of the LRA. They're trained to help, and it's a chance to learn more about their targets. If you think about our experiences with Osama bin Laden, we had some of the best platforms in the world flying in all the wrong places for eight years. In the end, it was human intelligence that led to him. In the end, it's going to be human intelligence here that leads to Joseph Kony. He told us some of the best human intelligence has come from those closest to Kony. Like this man captured by Ugandan forces last year, Major General Caesar Achella. The Ugandan military granted us a rare interview with him. He's the highest ranking LRA commander ever to be taken alive and knows more than almost anybody about what Kony's doing today. Kony's only struggling for survival. As Kony fights for his survival, he's still killing people. He's still terrorizing villages. Yes, he's doing it. A Chalam, who claims he was abducted as a young man, spent 20 years with Kony, and for much of that time, he was his chief of intelligence. We pressed him on the role he played in the countless atrocities carried out in Kony's name. You were part of an army yeah. that abducted children that taught children to kill in terrible way, to beat people to death, to crush their skulls, where young girls were raped. Mm -hmm. Did you witness that? I would say in a sense. Not in a sense, yes or no? There were a number of things that you may not even wish to do, but you do it. And all these people who are doing atrocities, do it under constant instruction. Mm -hmm. Including you? And according to instructions. Including you? Yes. A Chalam told us Kony rules by fear and claims he has mystical powers, a formidable combination in the minds of the children he kidnaps. These young men were all soldiers in his army, rescued just a few months ago in the Central African Republic and brought home to northern Uganda. They were all younger than 13 when they were taken from their families. We were told this was God's war, so out of fear of God, I believed everything I was told, and I followed. Franklin, Dennis, and James all described a bizarre religious ceremony they had to undergo when they were initiated into Kony's army. When you just arrive, they smear some oil in the shape of a cross on your forehead here, and on your chest and your back, and that's supposed to change you. Does it work? Yes, it works. It changes you completely. It numbs any thought you may have. It kills everything. You just listen to what Joseph Kony says. And what Kony and his commanders told these young men to do is almost beyond description. <laughs> if a new abductee tries to escape, all of the children were ordered to bite them to death. They would. They would bite them with their teeth? Yes, until they die. They were robbed of their rights as children. And robbed of their innocence. Robbed of their innocence. 
Betty Begambe has spent more than two decades trying to help Uganda's child soldiers return to their families. She told us this is what northern Uganda looked like just a few years ago. Entire villages of children on the move, driven by fear and walking for miles to sleep in a place where Kony's army couldn't snatch them from their beds. For years, they would do this every night and return home in the morning. You look at these children and say, they cannot feel secure that I can sleep without thinking of anybody coming in to abduct or to kill them. Did you hate Kony oh, for what yes. he'd done? Oh, yes. Yet, for many years, she's been the driving force behind the Ugandan government's efforts to make peace with Kony. When she first tried to contact him, he responded by sending her a message that was delivered in the most horrifying way. I was faced with five people. They'd been amputated and given letters to bring to me. Five people with their yes. limbs hacked off, with a letter for you that says what? Yes. The letter was all very bloody. The letter was saying that uh, they were coming in to kill me. I should stop mobilizing people against them. But that didn't put you off, that didn't stop no. you? No, if anything, it gave me even more determination. Kony finally agreed to meet with her in 1994. To find him, deep in the jungle, she says she had to walk for hours, escorted by his child soldiers. The speed at which they move in these jungles is amazing. They literally glide in. You see it dust. And when he was coming, my God, the drama. Begambe, who you see here, gave us this video of the meeting. His supporters were dressed like nuns, and then they were singing, and then others would drop down that the demon was coming. So many things happening at the same time, because you look at this, my God, where am I? What's going on in here? Now, when I'm seeing him sitting right there, and I'm thinking, I wish I could just open his brain and understand why he does what he does. Bagambe left that meeting without a peace deal, and today the U.S. is pouring millions into getting Kony's soldiers to give up. Caesar Chalam, who once stood at Kony's side, is at the center of that effort, working with the very enemy he once fought. He's hoping for amnesty and is now the face and the voice of this campaign. Recording messages that are then broadcast over areas of the jungle where Kony's soldiers are believed to be hiding. And when Colonel Kreitz's men hand out leaflets to the villagers, it's a Chalam's face they see. Uh, you have a picture of Caesar Chalam on there, that's, that's pretty powerful. So the idea is if members of the LRA see someone who is as senior as Caesar Chalam and he's safe and well, that that will convince people that there's a safe way out of this. That's correct. Colonel Kreitzer says he knows it's working because Kony's soldiers have been defecting in increasing numbers, and his army is down to just a few hundred men. Recently, the Ugandans and the U.S. temporarily suspended their hunt in the Central African Republic because of political unrest, but not before Ugandan soldiers killed Kony's chief bodyguard, close to where we filmed them a sign that Joseph Kony's days may finally be numbered. How has one man been able to evade so many forces for so long? He's a survivor. He's not an uh, admirable human being, but he's, he's an admirable adversary. So do you think you and the Ugandans are, are getting closer to Kony? I believe we are. I can now wake up in the morning honestly and say, is today the day?